as a kind of reference point where we were last time. Um, so we, I was <laughs> taking, we were doing a solar system exploration, starting with Mercury, and I think we went out to Mars and looked at the, uh, looked at Olympus moons, um, and we were running out of time. So I just showed you this uh, solar system chart, and um, we looked at some things relating to Jupiter because there were some gravitational things I wanted you to see. So we did that, but there were lots of other things that we just uh, had to leave out because <laughs> we didn't have time. So let me show, uh, go to some of that. I think the good starting place would be first uh, by going to the sun. Let's see, can I just uh, go to, okay, yeah, go to sun. Uh, I, I'm going there so that I can zoom out. Um, let me track the sun. And let me just uh, zoom out. Um, turn on the orbit because I can't tell where the planets are unless I do that. And yeah, all right. I'm trying to be uh, trying to look down on the solar system from what would be um, above Earth's North Pole. So I'm seeing the orbit go counterclockwise. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, And yeah, as you can see, velocity for you to see a view like this, you have to move in at super luminal speeds. Okay, so those four, one, two, three, four inner orbits are are the um, the inner four terrestrial planets, and you have one lone thing here um, that's inside of uh, Jupiter's orbit. So Jupiter. Um, so that one thing, that's the only dwarf, uh, can I select this? That is the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt, or more precisely, it's the only body that's large enough to meet the definition of dwarf planet within the asteroid belt. And just so you have some sense of what the asteroid belt is. So if you are out here looking down on the sun and the solar system, you wouldn't see the asteroids. Um, so you wouldn't see the planets for that matter. I have to turn on orbit to know where the planets are. Um, now with the asteroids, there are so many of them that if I were to turn on the orbit for all the asteroids, like you wouldn't see anything else. <laughs> so let me go turn the orbits back off. I'm not gonna do this. Uh, what I can do is I can turn on the markers for asteroid. So that'll exaggerate uh, how dense they appear. They are frankly not all that dense, but by showing all these markers, you can get a better sense of just how many discovered asteroids there are. This is kind of um, things that an amateur astronomer with a decent telescope might do. Just look at the night nice sky, hoping to find an asteroid that no one else has found. These are all cataloged and tracked. So once you <laughs> discover one, you can compare it against the, the catalog to see if anyone else has found it. And uh, so, yeah, there are more being discovered. I Maybe not ev every day is an exaggeration, but there are more being discovered uh, all the time. Uh, Ceres, of all these, Ceres is the biggest one. So we'll go to Ceres and, um, oh, it's doing that because I'm tracking the sun. Let's go to Ceres and take a look at it. So this is Ceres. Um, so orbit looks weird, but let me just uh, leave it this way. Don't know which way is which. Um, so um, this should be relatively faithful um, representation of actual Ceres. Um, in places where you're not sure, you can compare this to the animation that you see in lecture slides. The animation lecture slide that comes from NASA, that's actual, uh, it's from the actual photo of Ceres. We've had an orbiter that orbited Ceres for a bit. Um, don't know about this feature here. I remember noting, seeing that before and I don't know if that's an actual feature or some artifact or I don't know. Um, but the biggest feature of Ceres that's, uh, um, that's uh, that's a significant here that I want to note is that 
it's round. <laughs> it looks round. <laughs> it looks kind of like a moon, except much smaller. Um, so here, yeah, it's showing the mass. So the mass of Ceres is about, I think that looks like a symbol for mass of moon. So this is saying it's uh, about 1%, 1.3% of mass of moon. Um, yeah, so I think that's smaller than 0 0.1 Earth mass. <laughs> but it is large enough that uh, Ceres is round. Uh, what that means is, and you know, if there's an impact or if there are, if, if there are any irregular features, um, the gravitational pull on that irregular feature is large enough that it kind of crushed the uh, or mountains or the crust under the mountain. Uh, any um, any bumps they are small relative to the size of the thing. So so this is the only dwarf planet within our asteroid belt. For comparison, let me find and go to one of the asteroids that are too small to be dwarf planet, but it's uh, large enough to be uh, have undergone differentiation. I think your textbook points it out as, I think, Vesta, the differentiated asteroid. And uh, where is it? Yeah, so I'm just, uh, uh, let me just turn my camera around that way. Yeah, it's over there. <laughs> I'll just uh, press the shortcut for going to that place. Um, um, can I turn off the marker? Well, uh, let me not turn off the marker. See how I'm not really going to collide with uh, any of the asteroids? That is realistic. Actually, before the, um, I think before the Voyager, the first uh, Voyager or Pioneer, one of the first space probes we sent to the outer parts of the solar system, we were uh, asked the, the NASA engineers were worried uh, if they're, they have to think about potential collision with asteroids. But um, what we have found is that the density of the material in the asteroid belt is low enough that collisions are rare and none of our space probes have um, suffered the damage from collision. Not that it would have ever happened, but the likelihood is so. So this is Vesta. It, uh, um, it looks round-ish, but you can now see, yeah, it's a little bit oblong. It's not really round. And you can see that um, its mass is smaller. Instead of being 1.3% of moon mass, it's only 0.35% of moon mass. So compared to Ceres, it's only it's about what a fourth time it's quarter of the mass of Ceres. so our definition of dwarf planet it doesn't try to set on exact boundary um it does it by feature and <laughs> what everyone agrees on is that this is not round enough and Ceres is round enough and the boundary between what is the dwarf planet and what is a small solar system body that's somewhere in between but our current definition doesn't try to uh, nail down a number. Instead, it describes by features that you would uh, expect to see. So, oh, oh, and just so that you can see that the this weird, the non-spherical shape is not due to the shading of the thing. Let me just uh, uh, turn up the ambient lighting so that you can see all the dark parts and see that the whole thing is not really spherical enough. I mean, there are particular views where it looks circular enough, but you know, it's a three-dimensional object. You turn around and it's, yeah, okay, it's not round enough. So 